What's up, everybody, man? It's your boy, Mr. Duga, coming at y'all with another video, man. <laughs> and tonight, man, I'm going to talk about and recap a little bit of this year's NFL Scouting Combine. You know, a look at a couple of LSU players, a look at a few SEC players, you know, the quarterback and a couple of other players overall who caught my eye. First, I'm going to start off with the two big dogs at LSU, man, Devin Wyatt and Greedy Williams. They both did an amazing job running their 40 time. Devin White came in, I think, at 442, you know, uh, which is pretty doggone impressive, man, for a 230 something pound linebacker. You know, um, he, he was filled with emotion right after he ran his 40, man. Cause it pretty much meant, you know, he should go like in the top 15, pretty much. The first team who wants or needs an inside linebacker is pretty much going to take Devin White. Um, this guy is amazing, man. Like, I, I just can't speak enough on what he did for this football team. The way he moves sideline to sideline, the way he hits people, the way he leads. And in this, in Dave Aranda's defense, he was asked to do a lot, man. You know, he not only audible, but he came down here to try to stuff the run. You know, we put him out in coverage and we blitzed him a whole lot, yo. He had a lot of responsibility out there. And with his speed, with his size and his strength and his speed, you know, and his, his mindset, his mental capacity, it lets you know that you should, like, it's like he's almost like a pretty much a can't miss, miss prospect. So shout out to Devin White on that. Then you had Greedy Williams who ran a 4-3-8 on his first 40. Which I must say, man, I'm pretty impressed by that. I didn't know if Greedy would have ran that fast. You know, Greedy, you know, he has a good wingspan. He has excellent top-notch ball skills. You know, the only, the biggest problem with him, man, is at times his hips is turning his hips quick enough. And, you know, that's why sometimes he got beat quite a bit on slant routes and stuff like that. But, man, that's good makeup speed he has there, man, and long speed, being able to run a full 3-8 on his first time like that. You know, it looks like he's pretty much going to be the first cornerback taken, you know, in the draft. You know, you need a linebacker, you need a cornerback, you take Devin White and Greedy Williams pretty much. You know, a couple of other SEC players of note, man, how about Montez Sweat from Mississippi State, man? <laughs> like... Full, full one, man, at what, 260-something pounds, a D lineman? That's pretty freakishly athletic, man. He earned himself a lot of money at the combine, man. You know, um, unfortunately, you know, his teammate, the big homie Jonathan Simmons, had torn the ACL, so he didn't get to really work out. And, you know, he may basically fall to, like, the second round, like players like such like a Sidney Jones, you know, for my Eagles, you know, a... Um, you know, like a Jalen Smith, you know, to the uh, to the Dallas Cowboys, you know, that they fell into the second round, like projected first round picks who fell into the second round because of like pre-work uh, workout injuries and stuff like that. So, um, you know, prayers for recovery for him. But Monte, like I said, Monte Sweat earned himself a lot of money, man. You know, he was talked about most so as like maybe a late early second round pick. Now I'm seeing mock drafts where they got him in the top 10, some of them even in the top five, man. So shout out to him for that, man. You know, then um, you go over to Kentucky, man. You got the big homie Josh Allen, who did his thing, man, rushing the passer all season long. You know, um, he's projected to be like a top five pick. You know, uh, then you got the Alabama guys. And all you Alabama fans know, as far as when it comes to your football team, I can't stand y'all. I don't like y'all. But I, but y'all got great players over there, and I got I respect that, you know. Uh, Josh Jacob, who's projected to be the number one overall running back, you know, going into the draft. You know, he didn't really he didn't run his forty time and didn't really work out too much. I'm not I don't know if he's saving it for his pro day or if he just felt like he the number one guy. He don't have to run it, you know. That's yet to be determined. But it's not really a really strong running back class, man. So. You know, if you probably in that number one spot, man, you know, and nobody really blew nobody away at the running back position at the combine. If anything, you know, you had a couple of people hurt themselves. Like, you know, like my boy Nick Brissett with LSU and, you know, Elijah Holyfield at Georgia who didn't do good times and, and may have hurt themselves a little bit as far as in the draft. 
But um, Josh Jacobs look like he out there doing his thing. You know, you also got Damian Harris from um Alabama who look like he gonna be uh, you know, gonna be look like he gonna get drafted and have an opportunity to really be on somebody's roster. But the big Alabama standout in the combine was Quentin Williams, man. I want to see he ran what a four eight big like he is, man, running a four eight. That's a freakish athlete, man. And I'm sure everybody in the SEC, including us can attest for how great of a, a player he is, yo. He's projected to go into the top five. Then you look at, you go over to Ole Miss, man, DK Metcalf, another SEC player who was projected later in the draft that possibly earned himself a lot of money <laughs> by his, you know, not only 1.3% body fat, but his amazing 40 time and his amazing workouts. You know, he, I've seen uh, mock drafts where he's now projected to go into the top 10. You know, so shout out to him, you know. Uh, then, you, like I said, I mentioned, you know, Elijah Holyfield, you know, didn't really have a good 40 time like that. Uh, then other players, man, that's, that kind of jumped off the screen to me, man. You know, you, uh, you had Rashawn Gary from Michigan. You know, he had a really solid workout, man. Nick Bosa's workout was, you know, it was okay, man. But, you know, everybody know he's going to be a pretty solid player in the NFL, pretty much like his brother is. Then um, you go over to the quarterbacks, man. Kyler Murray decided not to throw. Then you got these reports by Charlie Casserly, Casserly, Casserly however you say it, man, coming out and saying how Kyler Murray is not very good as far as, you know, on the chalkboard, you know, his leadership and stuff like that. I mean, who knows? You know what I'm saying? None of us are in the room to really see what's going on in there in these interviews and stuff like that. But all I know is if Cliff Kingsbury like him and the Arizona Cardinals organization like him, who cares? <laughs> He's going to go number one, you know? Uh, Dwayne, ha uh, Dwayne Haskins went out there. He threw, he slung the ball around, man. Showed a lot of velocity on his throws, man. You know, he looked like he going to be top 10 pick also, man. Uh, then you got guys like Drew Locke, man, you know, went out there. You know, he trying to be up there in the draft. Then there's this Daniel Jones guy, man, from Duke. I don't know if this guy is really good like that or if this is just, you know, the NFL and these scouts reaching <laughs> because obviously everybody love the quarterbacks, man. So, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I don't really know. Like, honestly, even with Kyler Murray, now, granted, uh, in their first years, I was absolutely wrong about Patrick Mahomes. I was absolutely, you know, wrong about Baker Mayfield. Because in their first seasons as, as starting, they held it down. They really did their thing and really performed that day. So, now, I mean, granted, there's still more football to be played. And, you know, teams going to start getting, getting adjusted a little bit. So, you know, we'll see how they do in the future. But at least for year one, they, they shut me up. And I wasn't big believers in them. And I'm kind of feeling the same way about Kyler Murray. I know a lot of people love him. A lot of people, you know, but I don't know. I, I see a guy running around. I mean, he could throw good. He got, you know, he got good velocity on his throw. Not great velocity, but good velocity. You know, he's an athlete. Obviously, he was a top 10 baseball, you know, draft drafted player. He's super fast. He can run really fast. I'm just, you know, a little concerned about him, you know, when he when he got a, he got when teams make him stay in the pocket and beat you. Similar like to Lamar Jackson this season, man. Granted he did well, but he didn't he wasn't great at throwing the football. So, you know, we're gonna see what Kyler Murray is all about, man. You know, once once we you know, first of all, see if Arizona gonna take him and then we're gonna see how he produce after that. You know, I'm not nothing against him. I wish him well. I hope he does well, except for when he's going up obviously against the Eagles, but, you know, which we don't, uh, do we? No, we don't play the Cardinals this year. But, uh, yeah, man, the quarterbacks, obviously, they always going to be the story and the headline of the combine. You know, other players who jumped off to me was Paris Campbell from Ohio State, you know, ran this 4-2. Obviously, every time I watch Ohio State, you know, he was number 21. You know, he running end the rounds and stuff like that and just breaking for, like, 70, 80 yards. So you know he has a lot of speed. And um another player who stood out to me was was Devin Bush, who's you know the number 2 linebacker right behind Devin White. He he earned himself a little money, man. You know, he had a really good combine, a really good workout, man. So you know, shout out to him for that, man. But um 
Overall, man, a lot of these guys did I did, went out there, did what they had to do, man. And in some aspects, I understand the combine, but at the end of the day, man, it's about what you do on that football field once these teams get you in their facility, you know. Um, but, yeah, man, but that, that being said, man, that's all I got for y'all tonight. Appreciate y'all checking out the video. Go and give me a subscribe, man. I'm going to have LSU and NCAA football content, man, throughout the season. Y'all have a blessed one. Go Tigers.